Hey, what's up? This is Pat Flynn from smartpassiveincome.com. And if you're brand new to Timeline for Facebook pages, this video is exactly what you need. I'm going to give you a fast track lesson on how Timeline works and the most important things you need to understand before diving into it. In this video, I'm going to cover the cover art or cover image like you see there, the profile picture and thumbnail, the apps area, including how to change the thumbnail for those apps, including third-party apps you may want to install, and then we'll move down into the actual timeline and I'll talk about pinning, highlighting, and milestones. Again, all important features of timeline for Facebook pages you need to understand. So let's get right to it. The top portion of your page is your timeline cover, an 851 by 315 pixel image that is the most important part of your page because it's the first thing people are going to see when they land on it. And for those of you wondering if we still have the option to create a landing page that people will be able to see first, no, that option is now gone. This is the only page people can land on first. So this cover image becomes even more important. And I encourage you to be creative here and upload an image that best represents you and your brand. And here you can see myself, uh, my podcasting mic, because I have a podcast uh, with my logo, picture of my son in the background, and a shot of my computer showcasing my blog, my podcast, and my YouTube channel, which sort of represents my be everywhere marketing philosophy. And those are things that are important to me, which is why I have them there in my, uh, my cover art. Now, there are some important rules that Facebook has stated that we must follow that I want you to understand before you create your own art. Number one. No price or purchase info to be included in the art. So if you're selling any products, you can't say how much they are or if there are any discounts or anything like that. Number two, no contact info, which means, this is crazy, no web addresses, no email addresses, no phone numbers, or anything else that Facebook says should be listed on the About page. So just no contact information, which is crazy, but that's the way it is. Number three, no references to other Facebook features such as like or share. So no longer are we able to ask people to uh, please click the like button. However, I, I've seen some creative people suggest to do that through the graphics they include in their cover art. So you have to be a little careful there. I'm just, just saying. And finally, no calls to actions. So in your cover art, you can't put words like get it now or tell your friends or things like that. So to upload a new cover image, you can just hover over your existing image like this and click on change cover. That'll open up a menu that says, uh, you know, you can upload a photo from your computer, choose a photo from your existing Facebook photos in your pages. Uh, and those are your two options. Now, just to let you know, if you're having trouble with resolution and blurriness when you upload your image, my particular image, which uh, for some reason looks really crisp, is 851 pixels wide by 315 pixels tall, that those are the limits, 300 pixels per inch, and it's saved as a PNG file. Now next, let's talk about the profile image. This is a 125 by 125 pixel box on the screen, but it actually must be 180 pixels by 180 pixels when you upload it. Facebook just shrinks it down, so just keep that in mind. And the important thing to note here is that this image or at least part of it, will become the thumbnail image or icon that Facebook uses for your conversations below. So most people will make this their logo, and some will be creative and actually have it be a continuous part of their cover art image. And I'll give you a tool to help you do that in just a second. So to upload a profile image, just hover over the existing one, click on Edit Profile Picture, and then upload a new one from there, just kind of the same way. You could take a photo with your webcam if you want. And to edit the thumbnail, again, the icon that you use in the conversations below, you could do the same thing. Hover over your existing profile picture and then click on edit thumbnail. And then you can kind of scale it and drag it and you know pick the image that you want from there. Now, lastly, let's talk about this area here, which are the app thumbnails. The first one to the right of your about page, or excuse me, your about area is for photos. This automatically shows a thumbnail of the latest photo that you uploaded to your wall. And this cannot be changed. This app can't be moved or deleted or swapped. It's there for good. So let's not even worry about that one for now. To the right of that one, there are three visible Facebook app spots. And these can be changed or swapped out for others uh, that are hidden. Now, most brands, uh, and you don't have to, but most brands will probably keep 
keep this one here, which shows the number of likes, because it shows the number of fans, which is great for social proof and getting other people to like the page as well. But you don't have to keep it there if you don't want to. Now to swap applications and move them around, all you have to do is click on this little uh, triangle here to the right-hand side, which kind of toggles all the apps, and then you can hover over any of them and click on the pencil icon in the upper right-hand corner. And then this is where you can, uh, for example, I could swap this one with the likes one, and then it'll change it. So I can swap this one with that one, and, and I can move them around if I want to. But I'm gonna put them back to where they were. Now what's cool is you can also edit the app name and the app thumbnails from here as well, even if they are from third-party applications. So I can, for example, click on the pencil here. I can change the name of this uh, by going to edit settings. So I can change this custom tab name here, and I can also change the thumbnail image. Now the thumbnail image is going to be 111 pixels wide by 74 pixels tall. And you can include calls to actions here, which I highly recommend uh, depending on what app you're using and what you want people to do. Now, a quick tip, if you head on over to smartpassiveincome.com slash timeline, you'll see a download for a PSD file, a Photoshop file, which will allow you to create a cover image uh, that, you know, a, a cover image, profile pic, and app thumbnails that are all connected to one continuous image, uh, if you wish. You don't need to use this, you know, not everyone will. But all you have to do is open this file and you'll see it looks like this. And then you can drop a photo in there and you can move it around as you can see it kind of, uh, you could scale it and, and um, you can export the images and it slices it up so you have each of the files in the correct sizes uh, when you upload them to Facebook and then drop them in there like I just showed you. Now you don't have to use this, but it's there just in case. Again, you can go to smartpassiveincome.com slash timeline and all the instructions are there for you below. Okay, so that's the top of the timeline. Now let's move into the timeline itself and let me uh, go over some quick things including pinning, highlighting, and milestones. So first let's talk about pinning. Pinning is the ability to make one of your posts static or sticky and always showing at the top left of your timeline. The pin to post will stay there for a maximum of seven days unless you pin another post. And you can only pin one post at a time. So to pin a post, all you have to do is simply uh, go down to a post that you really want to be sticky and up at the top, hover over it, click on the edit or remove button, which is this kind of pencil looking icon, and then just click on pin to top. And as you can see, the page reloaded and is now pinned to the top. And you can tell it's pinned because of this little orange flag that's up there. So this post is now sticky and it'll be, it'll be up there at the top for everyone to see, even if I include other status updates, photos and milestones and other things. Okay, so next, highlighting. Highlighting makes a post double wide, taking up both sides of the timeline. And this is what you wanna do when you really want something to stand out. So here's an example below on my own page. I'll scroll down, you'll see it. It becomes very obvious right here. This is a highlighted post, which is actually a video. Uh, and, and you can see it just stands out like crazy. And you can actually highlight more than one post. Pictures and videos are best. And you can go back as far as you like and highlight something there too if you wish. You can actually go back into time and pin something up at the top uh, as well. Now note that you cannot pin and highlight something at the same time. Pinning something, like I said, always puts a post at the top left hand side of the timeline and highlighting will make it double width and you, you can't pin a double width post or you know that would be pretty cool but you just can't do that. So to highlight a post all you have to do is hover over it so let me find one with an image that I think is interesting uh, and then click on this little star that says highlight and then as you can see it just immediately makes it double wide. It's more interesting to look at uh, and, and, it, and it's great for images and, and videos. Okay so lastly milestones. Milestones are cool because you can think about important events that have happened in the past with your business or your page or whatever your brand is about and insert them into your timeline. Maybe when you earned your first dollar or you got your first client or when you sold your hundredth item. I don't know, it's, it's up to you. For me, and I'll show you some that I've already put in here, uh, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom or actually click down here where it says founded and you'll see that these are a few milestones that I put in, which are sort of the first design iterations of the blog when I first launched. So this is actually what the Smart Passive Income blog looked like 
when it was first launched. I added another milestone when it was uh, redesigned again. That looks terrible. Uh, and then it starts to get a little better and it has a date to go along with it. So, it, it, you know, this is stuff I just thought people would be interested in seeing how I went from zero subscribers on this day one all the way to 40,000 uh, 40, subscribers now, which is pretty cool. Now, note that milestones take up full width of the page, and it must include a date when you insert it, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. And the description or the story that goes along with it, as you can see here, is kind of centered uh, on the screen, which is kind of cool. So it really looks like an event that has happened. So let me scroll all the way back up to the top. To add a milestone, just simply go to where uh, you would normally leave a status or a photo and then click on milestone and it opens up this window. You can add the name of the event, uh, optional location. You have to put in a date and then you include your story. You can upload photo or choose from a photo that's already existing in your library in Facebook. And uh, you, this hide from newsfeed, you can click that on if you kind of just want to quietly insert that into your timeline. Or you can unclick it and it'll be an actual like broadcast to all of your uh, current fans to see that you've included something new as a milestone. So uh, yeah, that's it. Now you're covered on the basics of timeline. I'm not going to do a milestone there, but that's, you know, those are the most important parts. So, you know, a couple other quick things, make sure your about area is uh, is exactly what it, what you want it to be, a little description of what your site is about or what your business is about. Uh, this entire area can be clicked on and it goes to your about area. And then also, uh, you know, this part down here that says recent post by others, uh, this is really important because this is where most of the interaction from other people will take place that are not on current threads or comments or status things that you've uh, created yourself. So this is where you would go to see other people leaving comments and this is a great place to come and interact and engage with your audience even further. So I'm gonna close this and uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope this was helpful to you. Remember, go to smartpassiveincome.com slash timeline to download the Photoshop file to help you create your images uh, and so you can get some e even more advanced videos for the Facebook timeline as well as they come out. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be coming out with a lot more videos about timeline for pages in the near future. So get those quickly by subscribing. Thank you so much. Uh, for your time and uh, yeah, any likes or shares or you know just subscribing to the YouTube channel would be awesome. Thank you so much, and I'll uh, talk to you in the next video.